40% of overweight men view themselves as fine. Find your truth. I would rather offend you to heaven than flatter you to hell. What is truth? Hi friends, welcome or welcome back to my page, Fearfully and Wonderfully Made. I am Mia and today we are going to be going over my church notes. If you don't already follow me on Instagram, I definitely recommend hopping over to Instagram and following me at Mia Ashman where I do post my church notes as well as links to my Etsy shop, promo codes for some of the different brands that I am currently working with. But if you are new here, make sure to go ahead and smash that like button and subscribe to my page and make sure your notifications are on because I do post at least two videos a week. But in today's video, I'm going to be reading through my notes on what truth is. Now my pastor broke it up into four different parts of what truth is and how we can decipher truth from everything else. So let's get into it. Number one being that truth is divine. Divine meaning that it comes from God. Truth is not determined by a popularity contest or by popular opinion. Truth is not defined by man or what we came up with or what we created. Truth is divine, meaning it comes from God. God is the definer of all Things. God defines sin, God defines salvation, God defines life, God defines birth, and everything in between. And so often we try and change the definition of things based on how we feel so much that people have gotten comfortable saying things like, I know that's the definition, I know what that means, I know that this is what the definition technically is, but... I just don't feel like that word apply. When the real question we should be asking is, who says? Do you say? Or are you God? Did your teacher say? Did your pastor say? Did CNN tell you that? It's like, where are you, where is the source of your information? Is the source of your truth you? Is the source of your truth popular opinion? Is the source of your truth anything other than the divine word of God? Without the divine fundamental foundation rooted in Christ, with Christ as our cornerstone, without that, we replace truth with whatever sounds good, with sound like truths, with mix, with things that make us feel good, with popular opinion, with things that don't offend. And when you take God out, something moves in. When you remove something, you have to replace it. If you remove a demon from your house, but you don't replace it with the spirit of God, the demon will come back. The demon will come back and find your house still empty and say, all right, well, since I left, and now I'm coming back and you're still empty. You still haven't replaced this with God. I'm coming back sevenfold. I'm coming back with seven of my friends and I'm going to get in here and make it even worse than when I was here the first time. When you take God out, something else moves in. There can't be a vacancy with truth. The truth is rooted in God, which means our definitions, our foundations need to come from God. Otherwise, it comes from the devil, the devil who is the master of deception, who takes truth and bends it just enough to make it sound good, to make it feel good, to make it palatable so that we would be deceived and led astray. And we see this everywhere in schools, culturally speaking, we are being taught that truth is relative, that truth is hard to define. We, we no longer like definitives. We no longer like absolutes. We prefer for truth to be 
fluid. Maybe truth might come from one group of people. Maybe truth comes from some trip that I took. Maybe truth just comes from what everybody agrees with at the time. But what God said, what Jesus said is the path is narrow. Why is the path that leads to destruction? Narrow is the path that leads to the Father. I am the way, the truth, and the light. No one gets to the Father except through me. That is the truth. That is what Jesus said. Those are his words, and his word is truth because he is the completion of divinity. Truth is divine. Secondly, Truth is objective and absolute. Therefore, it is not subjective. It's not based on our perception or our circumstances or our situations. It's not based on how I see something versus how you see something. Truth is objective and absolute. Every time, always, regardless. There is a vast difference between truth and perception and there are consequences in living out a life based on our perception of what we believe and living out things that are not truth and I loved the example that my pastor shared which said that 40% of overweight men view themselves as fine. So truthfully, they are overweight. That is the truth. And 40% of the men that are overweight said, I'm fine. Now, on the other hand, 30% of underweight women have the belief that they should lose weight. Now, the point that he made here is that our perception then makes us do things or makes us not do things based on what we think, based on how we Feel. And sometimes the things that we do can be destructive. You're already underweight and you're losing 10 pounds. That could be destructive to your health. And if you're overweight and you think that you're fine, so you're doing nothing about it, being passive can also be destructive. So our perception of truth can negatively impact the way that we live out our lives, the way that we walk out our lives. If it is not based on the actual truth that is absolute and objective, if we live a truth that is subjective based on what we think, what we believe, what we feel, our circumstances, it could be leading us astray. And like I said already, like in schools, they are teaching us now that, that there could be more than one truth. That you could have your truth and I could have my truth and the teacher could have their truth and every single student in the class could have their own truth. Find your truth. Like, what does that even mean? Like, if everybody has a different truth, how could they all be true? It like doesn't even logically make sense. Whereas the word says, we are called to know the truth, to know the way. We should know what sins are. We should know what the consequences are so that we can make wise choices, so that we wouldn't be making choices out of ignorance because we've defined our own truth. Because our journey with Jesus is based on our understanding of God. As we mature as Christians, as we read the word more, we develop our knowledge and understanding and wisdom of God. When we are baby Christians, we act like babies, we talk like babies, but as we mature, we grow and we learn God more, we live out of the revelation that we have of God as mature Christians. As a baby Christian, you might think something as naive as, it's okay for me to take this money that's technically not mine because God put it right here so like he wants it for me right whereas a mature Christian knowing the heart of God knowing the generosity of God knowing the honesty of God you would say this is not mine Satan might have put this here and this is not mine this is not for me so I'm gonna find its owner I'm gonna give it back to them if this is my parents money I'm not just gonna go take their money and disrespect them I'm gonna give it back and as a and as a baby Christian it is so easy 
amazing for us to live out our faith based on the small revelation that we have of God. And that is why we are meant to grow and to mature. That is why Paul says, you shouldn't still be drinking milk. You should be eating meat. By this point, you should have grown up. As Christians, you're supposed to grow up. When you give your life to God, when you give your life to Jesus, you're saying, you are Lord of my life. And the Lord of your life says, know my commands. Keep them on your heart like a tablet. Like a tablet, we keep our tablets closed. If you left the house without your phone, you will be going back for it. So you need to be keeping the word like you keep your phone. This should be like your phone to you. If you leave the word behind, you should, you should pause everything just like you would if you left your phone behind. And the command should be on your heart and on your mind just like anything else. More than at that because that is what God commands. That is what we should be valuing because truth is not subjective. So if we know the truth, then we can walk in the truth. But if we don't know the truth, then we will walk in our own ignorance and our own perception of reality. Now, the third point is that truth is immutable and eternal. Now, immutable is a confusing word and a little hard to pronounce, but essentially it just means unchanging, unwavering. He is the same God then, now, and always. Truth is the same then, now, and always. Truth is not like an iPhone. It doesn't get a new update every single year. It's not something you constantly need to be replacing because it's getting better and better and better and the old ones are no longer good. It doesn't expire. Truth is not spoiled milk. Truth is eternal. And culture would have us believe that old school is stupid or bad or that, or that because something is simply old, that it no longer holds value as if morality expires. Whereas it just doesn't even logically make sense that a timestamp would then make something untrue now that it's been so long since somebody discovered it. I mean, we discovered gravity how long ago? Does it make it untrue because it was an old discovery? No. And the truth is, we are constantly making excuses for ourselves and for each other. We, we call it personalities. And the truth is, we should be quick to forgive and we shouldn't hold things against each other. And the point here isn't that we shouldn't be giving people the benefit of the doubt, but we shouldn't be excusing sin for personalities because this in this day and age and nowadays, like that's still not an excuse for sin. It is the same as it was before, and it is the same forevermore. And truth will always lead to freedom. Jesus is the embodiment of truth and grace, and Jesus is the only way to freedom. We should be honest. We should be truthful. We should be full of grace. Don't get me wrong. It's not like we should just be running around pointing fingers, attacking people. I'm definitely not recommending going on Facebook tonight and telling people all about how they're wrong because of the eternity of truth. But what I am saying for the people in your life, the people in your world, stop excusing sin. Grace leads to Jesus. Truth leads to Jesus. Jesus is freedom and that is eternal that doesn't change it doesn't matter if you're talking to someone who's older than you or someone who's younger than you it doesn't matter if you're working through issues with your parents or if you're training up your child truth is eternal now the fourth characteristic of truth and the last one we'll talk about today is that truth is singular and authoritative now, I did a video on the different parenting styles and authoritative is the best parenting style because it is the way that God, our Father, parents us. It is not with timidity, it is not with fear, it is not sugarcoating things, it is full of truth, full of grace, but full of authority, clear, consistent, concise. It communicates and trains us that there is a right way of doing things and there is a wrong way of doing things. There is a broad path to destruction and there is a narrow road to heaven. And when we choose to take on a view of truth that is 
objective, that is open to interpretation or fluid, that has consequences. There are consequences to living outside the bounds of truth. When we are living with a misguided perception of the world, we are constantly doubting things. We're living with depression and fear and anxiety. We're confused and we're misguided and we're misguiding others. And ultimately, a lack of clarity, a lack of consequences leads to bad boundaries, leads to hurt. It leads to unhealthy compromises. It leads to broken promises, selfish living, bondage. Living outside of God's will leads to bondage because the only path to freedom is the truth, is the way, is Jesus. Now, in John 8, verses 31 and 32, we read, to the Jews who have believed him, Jesus said, if you hold to my teachings, you are really my disciples. Then you will know the truth and the truth will set you free. If you hold to the truth, not a truth, if you hold to the truth, my teachings, my being Jesus's teachings, if you hold to Jesus's teachings, you will know the truth, the absolute truth of Jesus, and it will set you free. All day, every day, I would rather offend you to heaven than flatter you to hell. It is not right for us to be living in this perception that we can all just have our own truth because we don't want to hurt people. Offense is not on me. Offense is on you. You choose to be offended. That's your choice. Offense is a spirit that you pick up, a spirit that you decide to carry. You have a choice. You have a choice to pick it up. You have a choice to turn away from it. We all have a responsibility to, to ready ourselves, to prepare ourselves with the truth, not only for others, because it is important for us to be able to disciple others, but also for ourselves, that we would know the truth. And that's not so we can pick fights with other people. That's not so that we could be on social media proving all of our points. That's so we can be at peace with all people, but that's also so that if we're asked a question, we know the answer, so that the people in our sphere would know the answer if they seek, if they knock, if they ask, if they come to you, that you would have an answer, or at the very least, that you would know where to turn. Going back to the book of John, Jesus says, you say that I am a king, in fact, the reason I was born and came into the world is to testify to the truth. Everyone on the side of truth listens to me. But Pilate replies and says, what is truth? What is truth is Pilate's question and it is our question today. What is truth? Truth is God. The four different descriptions that we went over today, truth is divine, God is divine. Truth is objective and absolute, God is objective and absolute. Truth is immutable and eternal, God is immutable and eternal. Truth is singular and authoritative, God is singular and authoritative. The four characteristics of truth are four characteristics of our God because our God is truth. There are so many potholes for truth. There are so many sound like truths, myths, deceivers trying to guide you in the wrong direction, away from God, but do not be deceived. When truth, when God is absent, chaos ensues. Do not allow chaos into your soul. Do not allow chaos into your home, into your church. Let truth reign and shine where you are because God is truth and God is in you. The truth is you will be known as his disciple if you hold to his teachings, not by multiple ways, contrary to popular beliefs. So my challenge, my challenge for you guys is that you would hold 
to the truth, that you would know the truth, that you would know the word, and that you would keep it on you like you keep a cell phone on you. But with all that being said, if you made it this far in the video, definitely drop them below and comment a little backpack emoji. And if you like this video, if you like this video series, if you like me doing a review of my church notes, let me know by smashing that like button and subscribing to my page. But make sure your notifications are on because I do post at least two videos a week. You can also drop down below in the description section and you will find a link to my Instagram where I post my church notes, my Etsy shop where I have a bunch of Christian resources, as well as a link to the sermon straight from my church if you're interested in watching the rest of that video. But until then, be blessed and I'll see you guys next time.